Today, we're gonna to talk about how to create freelance quotes and proposals here on The Journey. All right, Neely, so I used to volunteer a lot for SCORE, which is, have you ever heard of SCORE? I haven't. Okay, well, it's just another thing like a chamber of commerce or a place you can go as a business to okay. seek advice. Um, or they could just check out the journey. But anyways, when I was there, I noticed a lot of the businesses that were going to score for help were businesses that hadn't started yet. Like they're brand new. And what was coming up a lot was actually what I wanna talk with you about today is why? Like why would you have a quote or a proposal in the first place? Yeah, and there's a couple things around why you really need to create a proposal and that quote. And to start off, it really comes down to keeping everyone accountable for what the agreed upon costs are. Your proposal is gonna house all the information on the project, at least high level overviews. So keeping everyone accountable on who does what, mm -hmm. when, why, where, how, all those questions, right? It's all gonna be baked right into that proposal. And that makes a ton of sense, the whole accountability thing. It reminds me of when I was in like college studying psychology and there's the whole bystander effect, mm -hmm. which, you know, a lot of times you think of like bystander effect, you're on the street and there's 40 people and someone gets injured, but because there's 40 people, no one's jumping to the scene to help the injured person. Well, it actually happens in the workplace too. It's a whole phenomenon. Right. It's like, well, there's a bunch of people in this group, so like, I don't have to follow through with these tasks. Yeah, someone else has got someone it. Someone else has got it. But uh, with a proposal, I know I struggle a lot when I first started out freelancing is that scope creep. So keeping that that proposal Wait, in what there. what is it called? Scope creep. So essentially, <laughs> it's not some Sounds creep. Sounds like a dance move. With, all right, cool, what's the dance move? Right <laughs> no, on the spot, let's go. I can't do it, I can't do it. Scope creep's I, coming soon. I already embarrassed but, myself enough with karaoke. But scope creep is basically, so you agree with a client on a project, whatever that is, you complete the project, but then they keep adding on tasks and like, oh cool, one more thing, oh cool, one more thing, oh cool, one more thing. Nothing cool about that. Right, so they they, scre they creep on that scope and they go <laughs> way over, they, they cross the line sometimes. I love this So term. that proposal helps you really keep everyone in line of cool, this is what we've agreed upon uh, and keeping it within there. And then you can add in your proposal, like hey, if any tasks are beyond this, I have set quote or set hourly rate mm -hmm. that you can kind of Make sure it sticks because it's it's not fun when you have a client that you didn't set those expectations with, and now they just assume that you're there to do all the things for the price, and it's not any fun. All right, Neely. So I imagine, which this is really similar to social media, like there's not a one size fits all approach to this. Exactly, no one size fits all with your proposals. You can't have just a one template basically and just send it off to every single client. Every client's gonna have different expectations and different mm -hmm. project needs, whatever that looks like. So that one size doesn't fit all. And if every client was the perfect client, we really wouldn't need a proposal or these agreements, but it's super important to have something in place to make sure everybody wins at the end of the day. So Neely, I'm getting the sense that, you know, you've done this before. Once you've, or twice. <laughs> you've written up a proposal. So what's next? I know we talked a little bit about estimates. What's behind that? What's it about? Yeah, so estimates are basically an estimate of whether you can complete the job assigned to you or given to you by that business owner in the time frame allotted. I'm actually working with a client right now. They migrated their Drupal site to WordPress, having some responsive issues. They're like, hey, cool, we got quoted three month time frame, but we really need it done in eight months at this cost. Mm -hmm. So I had to basically understand the project and give an estimate of cool, I can get this whole project done by X date for this amount. So it's a general loose time frame, like, like it's an estimate, like yeah. you're not necessarily guessing, but it's like an educated guess based on all the information that you have. You don't want that time frame to change, but at least you have an estimate and there is a, maybe a, a flexibility there as well, but you gotta have a lot of clear communication too. Absolutely. You know, with your client, I imagine that. Does yeah. it always go over well? Right, as as we all know, that you're watching this, I'm sure you've had some sort of experience with a client that didn't go the right way. But within that proposal too, you do wanna make sure you have a, a quote a, a, that's written mm -hmm. down in stone for this project. So you and the client know that the cost associated with it, whether it's your services or extra plugins or design costs or whatever that looks like, have that in there. And then we're gonna go through how to actually quote, like create your own custom quotes uh, later on in this video, but you definitely need to have that within this proposal. All right, Neely, so we've talked a lot about time and time constraints. Right. 
Now, and I'm sure you're asking this at home, what about cost? Can we get into that? All right, so going into the proposal, we got to figure out what the costs are associated with this and really price out our freelance rates. Now, I know I struggle with this, especially when I first got started. I didn't want to look like I was too expensive, right? I wanted yeah. to get work. Or too cheap. Uh, I ended up being too cheap to try <laughs> to get business because I wanted business, which a lot of us just starting out, we want to yeah. make sure we don't scare clients away. Now it worked, I was getting a bunch of clients, but I wasn't getting a lot out of it. And I felt like I was constantly working on projects and not getting a lot in return. Ugh, that's frustrating. Yeah, it, it was not good. And it, it basically did it for a long time. And then I had a mentor that was working with me for a little while. She basically sat me down and said, I'm gonna kick your butt if you keep doing these prices You're this low. More, I'm <laughs> worth it, I'm worth it. But no, we had a great conversation about the how she charged the clients and that perceived value, so I decided to try it. The next client I got, I jacked the prices up to what we talked about, and the client agreed. And that that extra cost increased the, the just the perceived value that I was given. Totally. Uh, and the client was super happy at the end of it. Like I was able to, to justify the cost, I, I nailed it. And then I was able to do that with the rest of my clients across the board and increase those prices. And I found I was actually working less and making more so then I could focus on those clients and over deliver while still giving that, that great cost. And it ended up increasing my, my side hustle and, and it has today. So I've seen you do some math before on other episodes of the journey. And I imagine to find out how much you're worth, there's gotta be some sort of equation here. Can you tell us a little bit about that or what that equation would be to figure out your worth? Yeah, uh, so the first thing you really wanna figure out is what do you want your annual salary to be? Like that that's the starting point. Do you need $50,000 to live off? Do you need a million dollars? Whatever Six that looks figures. like. So what salary would you like to earn as a, as a creative freelancer? Six figures. So we'll say $100,000. We're being super ambitious. And we wanna take that $100,000 and divide it by 1,000. Why, you ask? Thanks for asking. So there's t roughly 2,000. How many kids am I gonna have? <laughs> right, there's roughly 2,000 working hours in a year. It's, it's a little bit over, but to keep math simple, we'll go 2,000. You wanna basically spend half of that getting new business, focusing on the admin stuff, all the not so fun things that you have to do to keep your business going. The other 1,000 hours, that's gonna be you working on the business, the, the, whatever you're doing, whether it's building websites, creating logos, videos, whatever that is, you're spending that thousand hours. So $100,000 annually, that's what you wanna make for your salary, divided by that thousand, what does that equal out to? 100! Yeah, right? yeah that's yeah. exactly 100. right. This is only our seventh take, it's fine. <laughs> so $100 an hour is your hourly rate for you to essentially earn that 100K. Wait, question. Yep. Does it have to be hourly though? Like what if it's, I'm working for a monthly? Like, yeah. Do people do that? Or You absolutely can do that. But this is just something that you wanna kind of keep in the back of your mind as your hourly rate. Okay. So that when you do give your estimates and your projects and things of that nature, you kind of equate your, your hourly rate into that. Cool, mm -hmm. so it's gonna take me a week. I'm gonna be spending 20 hours on that mm -hmm. this week. What that looks like. Then you'll estimate the project by cool. It's gonna be uh, $2,000 for this project. You know it's 20 hours but you're not going, cool, it's gonna be an hour later for $100. It's gonna be, cool, this project is $2,000, but you know, I'm spending 20 hours, I basically $100 an hour, yep. maths and stuff equal that. Maths range. and stuff. Yeah, 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 it's an official term. And now with your quote, like you have all these things in there, you do wanna stay away from your hourly rate within your proposal. Why? It, it scares people because they can think that maybe you're just gonna kind of slack off and like hang out and stretch this out to a million hours. Who knows? Mm, uh, it, it's it, a good point. There's no like real definite stop and start points. So they're like, well, are you gonna keep just working and working? What yeah. is this actually gonna cost me? But you do your estimates, do your maths and stuff, and then you'll have your project estimate of, cool, it's gonna take me two weeks, 20 hours, $2,000. So the project proposal is going to be for $2,000. I've talked about this a lot when I first joined like GoDaddy Social because we offer social media service for businesses like yours. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time when that people would ask, well, how much do you charge to do all the social media? All the things. A lot of all the things. They generally, like people assume, businesses assume like this must be an hourly thing. And what we actually, when it comes to social media services, we do monthly pricing, mm -hmm. which makes a ton of sense to me. And I actually always tell businesses, if someone's trying to charge you hourly, be careful with that. 
like we have a set price and and give like what we're gonna do each month. And I just, to me as a business owner, if I were looking for social media help, I would want that, a monthly yep. flat price. But I could see how in different circumstances, hourly would make more sense. Yeah, and I love how you brought up that uh, you include what you're going to do. Yes. Like we talked about the scope creep earlier in the episode. That, that, that scope creep is super real, so make sure you include exactly the services you're mm-hmm. going to provide in that proposal whether it's bulleted lists or uh, paragraphs, whatever it makes most sense for you to really describe what the client is going to get out of it. Yeah, and also I found too, when I was selling social media as services, uh, businesses really wanted to know, yeah, what's in it for me? What are you going to do? But also provide an example of it. Right. That was a big thing too. It's like, okay, you're gonna manage my Yelp. What does that mean? Like, what does that look like? Well, talking to a dentist, show them a dentist on Yelp that we're managing and a review that they received and how we responded on behalf of the dentist. And then they can see like, oh, that's actually a really good response. And you're gonna do that for me? Cool. I don't have to think about how to respond to these happy and maybe unhappy patients. All right, so as I was mentioning, really important, and we're talking about explaining, hey, this is what you're gonna get and this is what we're gonna do for you. That's really great accountability. Mm -hmm. But imagine there's a fine line too with how much you say, like you don't wanna give away your secrets. Yeah, you don't wanna sell your secrets. You don't wanna lay out exactly bit bit for bit of what you're going to do because one, that document's going to be incredibly long and no one's gonna wanna read that. Nobody got time for that. No one has time for that. But then you don't wanna give them basically the foundation of what you do Mm -hmm. because it might sell you short or they might go, cool, I'm just gonna do that myself. Thanks for all the information. Have a great day. Right. Uh, that was free 99. Yeah, thanks for all the tips. Right, focus on the benefits of what they're getting out of your services, not necessarily the strategies, tactics, and all the features. All right, the moment you've all been waiting for. What's that? How do you get paid? How do you get paid? How do you get paid? <laughs> so in your proposal, you need to spell out how you get paid and the terms of which you get paid. I know what's super popular is a cash 50% money. also cash money. You're not wrong. Uh, but a 50% deposit down and then 50% upon completion. Mm. That way you at least get something in case things go sideways. But then upon completion, really just map out what that looks like. Are there revisions to your process? Are there extra steps that need to happen? Is there a set time of like, cool, it's finished. I need to get paid in seven days, otherwise there's late. Are there late fees for not paying on time? Oh, that's a good one too. Whatever that looks like, have that included in there. I'll add up. You also wanna make sure that you include ways, like just different ways of getting paid. Not everyone likes to use PayPal, not everyone likes to use a credit card. Have different options in there. Venmo. Venmo, I know I use that religiously. I'll accept your payment via Venmo. And hey, being a freelancer is tough. You're constantly chasing down money, sending out invoices, doing the work, work. doing literally all of the things. So it's good to have this proposal and quote system in place to keep your your just your longevity and your work protected. Your sanity. Right? All right, that's how you create a quote and proposal and all the things you need in it. Make sure you like this video, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And be sure to ring that bell so you're the first to know when our next episode comes out. This is The Journey.